growing up, you were probably uh, used to decimal numbers like we deal with every day. For example, if I gave you $532, you would probably think I'm awesome, but I don't have $532 to give you. So, or at least I probably wouldn't give it to you because then I'd be broke. Anyway, but decimal numbers are what we are used to. Um, if you did touch binary and hex in high school, uh, that depended on the geekiness level of your school. Some schools, I'm sure, could introduce their students, get them well acquainted with decimal, uh, I mean hexadecimal and binary numbers. And I hope they did because then that gives you an edge. If they didn't, that's fine. You should have learned it in your courses previous to this one. If you haven't, let me know and I can certainly do a video on it. But essentially, um, we work with hexadecimal so much in code, uh, especially C++ or game programming, uh, because we think of the machine as is. That is, a processor thinks in bits and bytes, and so it's quite common for us to have to encode values in binary or in hexadecimal. Um, and so I'm going to show you a simple trick for doing that. Uh, before I did it, or before I learned this trick, I used to do this the hard way. I would come to calculator here, and there's this view option, and you can say different things, but there's this programmer view, which expands the calculator, and at that point, um, you you get, basically, this, this is quite a nice utility for programmers. Um, right now, it's set in decimal uh, mode, which means any number I type in will be decimal. I don't remember the number I typed in before. Maybe, I think it was 532. Um, and if I want to see 532's hexadecimal value, I can just click on hex here and it changes it to 214. Um, if you notice that while I'm uh, while I was typing in uh, the values in decimal or showing their hexadecimal value um, representation, it doesn't matter. Right here we always have the binary view of the current value. So um, uh, if you look at this, basically this is bit zero. That's what that zero means. And this is bit two, bit one, bit zero, or bit zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, all the way up to bit fifteen here, and then from here all the way up to bit thirty-one, and then it just comes up to this row, bit thirty-two, all the way up to sixty-three. So that's sixty-four bits total, which uh, generally is um, well six sixty-four bits. Uh, or uh, a word, that's a word size on some machines. Um, anyway, details aside, uh, we can always see the binary representation right here, which is quite convenient. Um, I can also click binary. Now if you notice when I click binary, watch the, the keypad here. When I click binary, uh, this is the binary representation. Uh, notice I can only type in zeros and ones now because that's, that's all we have in binary is zero or one. Um, if I go to octal, octal is essentially three bits, um, which you can count up to eight values, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, I've never needed octal, nor have I ever really used it, so but it's there. Um, decimal is what we're used to. Notice we get the zero through nine. This is what we grew up with. That's quite nice. And then when I click on hex, I also get the additional A through F digits, which represent 10 through 15. Also notice with the binary here that they were kind enough to split these values into nibbles. So going back, or the hexadecimal, if I look, here's a 4. And sure enough, one byte represents 4 bits. So this 4, well this is definitely a binary 4. Then I have a 1 here which represents the next 4 bits. And just looking at these 4 bits by themselves, we see that yes, this is how you represent a 1. And then um, the 2 represents the next chunk or nibble, which uh, is, this is this is a 2 in binary, so that's quite nice. Um, if I type, let's type E here, notice that that just uh, erased the value I had previous. But E, this is this is an E, which is, if we think about it, an E, yeah, and you should really memorize this, but A is 10, B is 11, C is 12, D is 13, E is 14 and F is 15. So if I type F, notice that all of them turn on, whereas the E bumped over to the next nibble, and so on and so forth. And we can we can have some fun here. Let's 
let's clear this and then do 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, A, B, C, D, E, F. So we see F and E and uh, D and so on and so forth. And, and that's, that's nice. But anyway, I used to use this calculator all the time to convert from decimal to binary because, or from, from hexadecimal to decimal because I'd want to turn on certain bits. For example, say, say I wanted to uh, turn on those bits right there. And um, actually, let's make this more interesting because I can actually do that one in my head. So say I want to turn, uh, I want this value. So I want the bottom two bits turned on, and then these top two bits turned on, everything else preceding that, a zero, and then all the bits. In between. Well, so I'd come in here and I'd punch this thing. In fact, when I started working with calculator, I believe it didn't have the binary. I think I had to type in the hex, and then I'd click on the decimal and get the decimal value. So then I could say, okay, well, int value gets, and it's a 195, so 195. And that would turn on the bits that I'm interested in. But if you notice that, especially in numbers and decimal and binary and hex, this 195 is not what I'm trying to think in. That's decimal. And I have to now take that decimal number and convert it back and forth between binary and decimal just to know exactly which bits I'm turning on and which ones I'm turning off. And that's painful. I don't want to think a decimal, I want to think in hexadecimal, or at least binary, one of the two, because that's the type of machine that I'm working on. Well, C++ has a slick little trick to it. First of all, um, well, let's just let's just show that value is indeed um, 195. C out will print value in its uh, decimal form by default, so 195. I can come in here and I can throw in this uh, hex flag, which I know we haven't talked too much about how Cout works and how these stream insertion operators work. We will later, but if you can think of now Cout being Pac-Man and Cout's going to consume this flag which says, hey, the values after this uh, interpret as hexadecimal, print them as hexadecimal, so and then it keeps chopping away and it finds value and it prints value out in hex and then it keeps chopping away and prints or, or chomps the end line and dumps an end line to the black console window. So if we run this, we will see 195 in its hexadecimal form. C3. Well, okay. So if I go back to the calculator, if I type hex, hey, look, it is C3. That's good. And we can even look at the binary representation. This is uh, hopefully easily identifiable as a 3 because 2 plus 1 is 3. And then here we see that this is a C. So, so that's cool. But, but really, I would rather type C3 into my code, which you can do in C++. You can also do this in C Sharp. I believe this works for Java and I'm sure several other languages. So now I can think in terms of hex, uh, C3. So when I type the 0x here, it basically flags the compiler saying, I am about to give you a literal value, much like it's used to, bef used to with uh, the decimal representation. But the literal, I want you to interpret it as uh, hexadecimal. So that's all that 0x means is what follows is a hexadecimal number. And at that point, we can run it, and it builds fine. It'll print a uh, value out in its hex form because we still told C out to print it in its hex form. But uh, we can take out the hex, and it defaults back to its decimal representation. Run it. And we see we get 195. Now, if you think about it, you know, every number that we type in here, that was a 195, was it? Yeah, it was, okay. Uh, every number we type in here, uh, the compiler actually, the, you know, uh, and I'm not sure of all the internal workings of this particular compiler, but um, thinking in terms of binary or hex is native to a compiler, whereas when I give it a decimal value, um, it, the compiler has to do extra work because it has to represent this number in uh, binary. Now, I wouldn't worry about the extra work, but if you think about it, well, the reason we the compiler supports this is because us humans are used to it, and there's many calculations we do in game programming and other type of programming, and it's easy for us to think of decimal. But then other times, we actually want to think of bits as bits, and so it allows us to also type in values in their hexadecimal form 
each digit representing four bits which bits which is much easier than taking trying to think of the decimal representation and putting it in here so anyway this whole video is all about this zero x trick and basically being able to type a hexable decimal number literally into code